As a self-proclaimed fanatic of Scotland's landscapes, I've too long neglected a small corner of this stunning country. Like many other photographers travelling to Scotland, I'm often so keen to reach the far north and to quench my never-ending thirst for the Highlands. In this video, however, I begin a small adventure in my self-built micro camper van where I explore a much less visited region of Scotland's southwest. I keep hearing a woodpecker. Did you hear it? I don't think you're going to hear that. Oh, I'll tell you what it is. That is testament to how still and peaceful and tranquil this morning is. So this path that I'm currently headed down now should eventually lead to what I can only assume is going to be a mirror-like, dead still lock. So, what a start to this little micro adventure. Let's go and see what the morning has got to offer. You know what, these moments never cease to make me feel so grateful to have my camper van. You know, I slept beside the shores of this loch last night and, you know, I've said it in the past, what an asset a camper van is to any landscape photographer. I feel so lucky to have that beast, the Blue Jay man, yeah, to, to give me moments like this. Now, with that being said, in terms of the landscape photography, I am feeling somewhat uninspired. It's a lovely scene. You know, the sun started dipping down. You can see on some of these hills back here, but that's about it. It's just lovely. It's nice. You know, one thing that this scene did have sort of 20 minutes ago was those mirror-like conditions that I was talking about earlier. Even those have gone now as the winds picked up slightly. You know, you can see these ripples that are um, lapping up against the shore of the loch here. So it's a bit of a shame. And definitely my own fault, you know, I knew the weather forecast was for clear skies and also being in this glen here, the sun isn't down here at all. We're about 45 minutes past sunrise now, so definitely a little bit of a mistake on, on my part. But it's lovely, I'm glad I've come down here to have a look at it. Now on the way down here, I did walk through what felt like a bit of an ancient woodland, there was a burn or quite a large river actually running through it with loads of cascades, mossy boulders, loads of deciduous trees, you know, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna head back there now, and fingers crossed, we can uh, hopefully feel a little bit more inspired to get the camera out to take some shots. Oh, actually, I did send the drone up and I got a photograph from the other side of this lock, looking back into the Galloway Hills. So I'll show you that now. Now after that little chat that we've just had there at the side of the loch, I had, a I had to have a little word with myself, man. I didn't like it, I didn't like it. I thought it was a little bit daft, really daft actually, worrying to get down to the side of this loch 
look across the lock and think, nah, nothing here to photograph, and just write it off like that in the drop of a hat. Gone, see you later, lock. Yeah, nice, nice to see you, but nothing to photograph around here. No, ridiculous. And if you take anything from this video, as a, as a photographer, is, you know, learn to look a little bit deeper. And this is something that I think I definitely get complacent with. You know, it is, look at it, there's millions of things around us. All of these trees, the distant mountains, I've got all these wonderful focal lengths, you know, across the lock, there's islands in the middle of the lock. And then if you want to get intimate, like I'm doing here, unlimited, I could spend, you know, months in this spot photographing different things and you have to remember that. So yeah, I, as soon as I stopped that little chat with you, something didn't feel right and I thought, I know what it is, I'm just writing this off without even thinking about it. It felt really passive, you know. So anyway, I've come away and I've started to think, right, let me try and look at the landscape. Even if it's getting intimate, which is fine. I love that kind of photography. I'm not leaving this spot until I grab a photograph. And it's class. I love doing that sort of thing because I wouldn't say it pushes you out of your comfort zone. That's a bit over the top, but you know, you push your boundaries a little bit as a photographer. And that's what I've done here. And I found this really wonderful little selection of oak leaves, you know, and it, there's this, this really nice, quiet, muted brown color, lovely and sort of naturally desaturated, you know, there's a small bit of frost on, on them, not too much, you know, we've still got all of that nice, subtle color of the leaves as well. And this is what I'm sort of honing in on. In on. Now, I haven't really just chosen one small pile of leaves randomly and pointing the camera down. It's actually just one particular leaf. And I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put the old, put the old Z7 view up on your screen. There we go. So you could see cent uh, centered in the frame, there is that one oak leaf who's really sort of rigid, if you will. You know, he hasn't got many he hasn't got much damage to him and he's a lot brighter than everything else around him. And that is something that I'll bring out in post-production. You know, I'll probably shoot this in a bit of a five by four crop. So, you know, it'll be brought in from the, from the left and right a little bit. So it'll be more towards a square crop, you know, and I will really try and um, almost force the viewer's eye to that centralized oak leaf, if you will. But yeah, really nice little sort of subtle winter scene I'd like to think obviously very intimate but all in all I'm just delighted that I've managed to just like I said push the boundaries even just a little bit and not allow myself to fall into that trap of you know or oh, the, the wider scene hasn't got anything to offer so I'll just move on that is no good interesting now because I've got that same feeling that I had when I first got to that lock to the shores of that lock where I was looking at the scene thinking mm, I don't think there's anything there and yeah here it feels the same because I'm thinking about the wider shot you know how can I incorporate all of this scene into one photograph how can I capture the emotion of this moment in time of this location with one photograph as a wider shot. And I just don't think it's gonna work because look, there's way too much mess. Again, I don't feel like the conditions are suited very well to that sort of shot. So again, I'm gonna challenge myself to rethink, think outside of the box a little bit. And again, push them boundaries ever so slightly and probably look for something a little bit more intimate once again. So look at this man, I'll try and film it on my phone. There he is, that little robin. The little robin, he's still kicking about. 
absolutely loving his life. What a little gaffer. So, oh, I'll tell you what, this is a lovely morning. I'm so glad that I photographed those leaves early. I got that image because I feel like it's completely altered my mindset to a place where I feel so positive. I feel like there's images everywhere now. Whereas when I was first walking down through this very woodland, the path's only there. I felt, I looked at the water and thought, oh yeah, there's maybe one shot there. And I think that's, again, it's, it's worrisome. It's quite a dangerous place to be as a photographer, that sort of headspace, because there's always images everywhere. You've just got to be able to look to find them. So I've sort of been doing that again with this photograph. It's another one that's quite intimate. And like I mentioned a second ago, I didn't really feel like there was a wider shot of this river, of this scene, you know, especially now, as you can see, the sun started dipping down. It's just adding to that chaos. So I've got the 24 to 200 mil lens on and I'm zoomed in at about 180 millimeters and I'm really trying to work with the textures of the rock set against the, the slow movement of the water or as I'm shooting it anyway, which is around about one sixth of a second. So you've got that really nice milky effect from the water and it's kind of rushing around all them deeply textured rocks, you know, it's a really nice contrast of textures. So I've, again, I haven't just pointed the camera into the stream and hope for the best. I've tried to pick out a really small section, mostly just using the viewfinder on the back of the camera that incorporates some of them nice textured rocks. And I feel like there's a nice flow of the water diagonally through the frame, you know, probably from like top left to bottom right, that sort of thing. But yeah, most important here was that one sixth of a second shutter speed really to capture the, uh, the movement of that water in the way that I wanted it to look. F14 and ISO 500, I've had to bump the ISO up a little bit just to uh, make sure that I can get that one sixth of a second because I have got the polarizing filter on the front as well, which is making it a slight bit darker. I have focus stacked this photograph, but I have also shot it at F14 just in case. I don't know if I'll need the focus stack, but yeah, again, I'm just so glad um, you know, getting the, the creative juices flowing in my head and really like thinking like a photographer, man. That's all it is at the end of the day. Looking at the landscape in that way that we all do when we see everything as small little photographs. Quality. Last, so I'm just going to have one of these beasts. This is the old chili con carne and rice. <laughs> they seem to be all the rage. I've never had one of them, but I'll let you know how it is. And I'm just going to chill in the van for a bit. What time are we on now? It's like pretty much 12 noon. The light's still quite nice even now, to be fair, as it is so often this time of year. And then, um, gonna, yeah, have a bit of food, have a coffee, and then just probably chill out for about half an hour and then use the OS maps on the phone just to figure out where I fancy going for the rest of the day and for sunset. I think I've got a little bit of a small to medium hike in mind. So I can't spend too much time chilling out in the van. So a brief chill out under the winter sun was much enjoyed and the final plans were made for the sunset adventure. And by the way, the chili con carne was a 10 out of 10. Look at this man, I've spilt half the friggin' chili down my fleece. What a mucky pup. <laughs> so anyway, I have decided where I'm gonna go for the rest of the day and for the sunset. Now I have actually been to this area before. It was a good couple of years ago now, and it was just for a one-to-one -one workshop, but we went up a mountain called Merrick, which is actually the highest hill in this area of Scotland and it was a brilliant day out, great memories from it and I remembered, I was thinking about it in the van then, I remembered on the northern edge I think of Merrick itself there were a few little lochs like scattered around and I was just sort of browsing on the OS maps like I do and I seen there was a little trail going up to them so they're quite high up 
and I just think they're going to be a fantastic spot you know for these conditions in nice light for the sunset to be fair when is a lock ever not a great spot just to be at but of course I'm thinking about the photography um, as well so it's a fair old hike but like I said I'm looking forward to it and uh, yeah we best crack on So I've just had a quick little stop to look at the Ordnance Survey maps and it's actually not quite as far as I thought. We're about two thirds of the way now and you could probably just see beyond me there there's this burn crashing down through the valley and actually just beyond the burn is the loch or there's actually two or three of them up there so I'm really looking forward to exploring them but I wanted to just stop to show you the colours of these mountains here. Absolutely beautiful so golden and then we've got some of these darker crags up here on your right hand side oh there's some clouds rolling in as you can see they're drifting man so as you could probably tell the inspiration is flowing for for the evening's photography and just for the evening's exploration as well so yeah just beyond um, this little section of the burn here we should get to the the various locks and i don't even think there's that much more elevation to go up either, so it should be nice and simple, but oh, what a beast. Oof. So I have made it. To, sorry I'm being a bit rude, all will be revealed in a sec with my plans. Um, I have made it to the first loch, this is Loch Valley. Oh man, absolutely beautiful, such a gorgeous little reward for what was a, a fairly challenging hike. It was short, it shouldn't have been a difficult hike I suppose, but it was just so boggy man, so boggy. But we're here now, this is wonderful, it feels so hidden. An absolute gem, fantastic. So. My plan, I'll pop this up on the screen here for you now. So there's you guys, good day. Um, so you can see the sun is setting behind you guys. You can see we're gonna set round about there. So it's basically from the way that we came up. So I know basically that I want to be shooting in that direction. So I, what I'm gonna do is actually go up this hill that you can just see on the other side of Loch Valley here. It's only small, it's only a little mound, <laughs> but in the simplest way possible, I'm hoping it's just gonna give us a nice little area to shoot from, maybe a nice little vantage point, looking down on Loch Valley to use as foreground, and then we're shooting into where the sun is setting. Simple, it might not work, it probably won't, <laughs> but that is the plan. Loch in the foreground, hopefully we get a little bit of drama or color in the sky in the background. Remains to be seen. Let's get my hat on. <laughs> See you up there. So as the highest peak of southern Scotland came into view, I suddenly felt inspired for more adventurous vantage points and to my delight some larger hills offered themselves behind the scattered lochs. I trudged off piste up through the tricky terrain when a beautiful little scene presented itself to me and the camera just had to come out. I composed the image with the small waterfall down at the bottom left of the frame and the distant light dappled peaks on the right hand side. The foreground sparkled as the sunlight burst through some of the low clouds and I selected a one sixth of a second shutter speed to blur the waterfall and to give the image a dreamlike feel.
panic stations, panic stations. No, I'm not panicking. Well, I suppose I'm doing a little bit of a panic panel um, in that the sun's going soon enough and I need to make the most, look at the light. Look at that light, it even makes me look nice. That is saying something. <laughs> um, yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a classic four to five shots from right to left. A um, Couple of little rocks in the foreground which are really adding to the depth of the photograph. You know, it looks like we're sort of hanging off the edge of a cliff. It adds a lot of drama. And then this loch down here is absolutely asking to be photographed as a panorama. And yeah, it's all about trying to make the most of this light now. So let's get leveled up. <laughs> oh my goodness me. Ladies and gents, get a look at that. Isn't that just stunning? My gosh, I am blown away. Well more dramatic than I thought. I am so glad I made the effort to come up to one of these hills behind these, this, well, this particular lock here. Um, the legs are a bit tired, so what I'm gonna do is grab this shot now, this pano, and then start heading back down, regardless of what the light does, because I do not fancy too much walking in the dark with the head torch, because like I've been saying in this video, that is boggy down there. But, oh man, has this been worth it. So, like I said a second ago, this is asking to be shot as a panorama. Unbelievable. So simple, rock down here that's just behind my head. Easy in the foreground. Nice little anchor in the bottom right hand corner of the frame somewhere. That light is streaming into the frame as it is here as you're looking at it. And then, you know, the tripod's leveled out, of course. Um, classic approach to any panorama. Focus is the same for every shot. The settings are all the same. The white balance is all the same. You know, this is all so important. And then, yeah, it's just gonna be a strip across there. I cannot think of any better way to photograph that beautiful scene. Look at the way the light is interacting with all of them hills, guys. Oh, come on, man, this is why we do it. We've even got a little bit of drama. Well, I call it drama, but just some clouds, man, up, up in the sky. It's gonna help this photograph. For the vast majority of this day, we have just had clear blue skies. So this, this is welcomed. <sighs> Absolutely beautiful. And I just got as well, there's another lock behind you guys. Absolutely locks all over the gaff around these parts. And it is perfectly heart shaped. It is just sensational, pure chance. I just flew the drone up for the crack, but I grabbed a photograph of it as well. And I can only assume, not to overstate anything here, but I can only assume it's gonna be absolutely out of this world, that photograph. There, I've said it. So it wants to be good, really, doesn't it? For my own sake. And of course, I'll show you the panel as well. And then I'm gonna start heading back down, like I said. <sighs> living the dream, man, living the dream. tired <laughs> oh my goodness me man that was just a beast on the way back down the bog was much worse coming down because you're kind of sludging the whole of your body weight into it all whatever that means <laughs> so it's time for a little bit of food and time to chill uh, i've got a decent park up for the night which is right up where I'm gonna go straight to tomorrow morning. We've got the TV on the go on the lot here. Look at this, just waiting for the old fire stick to load up. I'm just gonna chill and have a few snacks, yeah. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in. What an adventure. And I'd love for you to join, um, join me next week for what's gonna to be tomorrow morning for me. So be sure to subscribe if you're new so you get any notifications for that particular video and uh, yeah if you could hit the thumbs up button that would be class as well thank you very much for your support i'm shattered i'll see you on the next adventure out mm -hmm.